Freelancers and small businesses need to pay on time. And if you're like me, everything about invoicing is kind of a hassle. Creating invoices, sending them out, tracking who paid and who didn't, it kind of stinks. So this episode is sponsored by Invoice Ninja. They have beautiful mobile apps. I can make and send out invoices in seconds, track who is viewing them, and of course, get paid. Check out invoiceninja.com slash candy. You're new to freelancing, you've got web development skills, and you are ready to go. The only problem is you're not sure how much to charge. Well, developers, in this video, I'm going to try and demystify this pricing process. It's something that I think most new and up and coming freelance web developers experience. This paralysis almost of analyzing all these different factors. How much am I worth? And then we have stuff like imposter syndrome and people not believing in us and all this psychological stuff. Okay. We got we to gotta step one, deep breathe with me. We got this. We, we got this. This is something that I experienced early in my career too. I chronically undercharged um, and it was only by my probably first year after that first year of freelancing where I really got into a gro- the groove of things or a groove. So if you're a little uncertain about what to charge, that's okay. M- almost all freelance web developers experience that, if not all. It may just be a blanket statement. So this is the thing though, developers, I can't tell you how much to charge. I can't just say, yeah, 500 bucks per page should do it. Or yeah, React app, 12K, easy. I can't tell you that because there are so many factors. Where you live, your cost of living, what your stack is, um, what your portfolio looks like, your communication skills, so many different factors. So instead of analyzing all of those in this video, We're going to do a fast and dirty method. It involves research. So fire up your Googles. What I want you to do is to Google freelance web developer and then put your city in there. Right now we are doing freelance web developer Austin, Texas. Austin is a pretty big tech city. There are a lot of freelancers there. We're going to try and get some numbers so we can we can kind of figure out where we fit in in all this. Let's assume we're, we're totally new to this. We have some web development skills. Maybe you've been playing around with WordPress. Maybe you do custom full stack, whatever, whatever it is you do. Maybe you even do Squarespace. Oh yes, some may laugh, but there is, there is money. There is a lot of money to be had in uh, Wix fixing Squarespace tomfoolery. There's a lot of money to be made with that. We're gonna check that out in just a second here. So go ahead and Google that step two What I want you to do is go past these ads, go past Upwork, go past all these, uh, the Google map stuff. Check out the first couple results here. Uh, Local solo is another type of local Fiverr type thing. But once you start seeing names, those are those websites I want you to focus on. Uh, Here we have Matthew Woodard. We have Auto Design. This guy's been doing it for about 20 years. Christy Price. You could do this before, during, or after, but what you really need to do as part of this process to figure out how much you may be able to charge, do an inventory of your skill set. Also, work on getting a freelancer portfolio up and running because any paying client is going to want to see proof of work, no matter what. It, even if it's a tic-tac-toe game, it's better than nothing. You have to have a freelancer web developer portfolio. If you need to know what goes in it or where to start with that, check out my course, Freelance Newbie. It's still on new to me. It's going away soon, so check that out. Uh, it is coming back on my new platform, but it's on new to me right now. Freelance Newbie, also it's a book on Amazon. I'll include the links in the comment section description box. Uh, so make sure you are thinking about that. You do need to have an online presence um, to get paying clients that are outside of your immediate network. If people in your area are doing WordPress stuff, that's a good indicator that there is a need for WordPress in your area. Maybe it's time to try and learn some PHP or improve your HTML and CSS skills if you're just doing templates, front end templates and designing stuff. So first item up for bids, Matthew Woodard, freelance web designer. This guy's a designer. He designs and builds better user experiences that directly increase your website's lead generation, conversion rate and revenue. Okay, so, so as you're doing this, take notes on what, per, what this person offers for services. Um, if you're a WordPress developer with UI and UX skills, 
this guy is going to be your competition. So what we're looking for is a few things. Uh, we've already figured out his tech stack or what he specializes in. We also want to see what his portfolio looks like to see if that matches what he's really talking about, which I'm sure it does. So he's done, he was a senior dev at Under Armour's Connected Fitness Apps. Not too shabby. Carstory.ai. Take a look at these projects and ask yourself, is this something I can produce? And if you, you say yes, that's a good sign because now this person really is becoming your competition. And these prices that he's gonna be listing are gonna give you some ideas for your own pricing scheme. So let's check out, there was a spot here where he said that he's actually, <laughs> step four, so he lists his process here. This is another thing we talk about in Freelance Newbie, but going to step four, bro, do you even code? He's like, well, yes I do. The development phase is where the project starts. He name drops HTML, CSS, He's dropping React. He's dropping React Basics with two-way binding. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why hire a freelance? So he designs jQuery. Okay. He designs and he builds. He also does SEO stuff. Now, this is something to start thinking about, too. Are you interested in offering agency-style services? So you're a web developer. You're coding. You're doing UX, UI. Possibly. Are you interested in pay-per-click campaigns? Are you interested in SEO? These are packages that, uh, if you learn those skills, that can be great monthly recurring income. So something to think about too, expanding your skill set as you see what these people are doing too. So I'm not seeing any prices yet. Let's try and see, schedule a digital strategy call. Also too, uh, there's no shame in getting inspired and implementing some of these ideas into your own uh, platform, if you will, or your own website, your own bundle of services. Uh, plagiarism is not good. Getting ideas from someone else and making them your own, totally fine. Great, do it. If it's awesome, make it your own and, and do it. So he, ha he offers a digital strategy call. I don't know if it's free or not. It probably says here and I'm just skimming over this, but let's see where show me the money jerry where is this price so after a few minutes if you're not seeing prices that means they want you to connect with them at this point you have two options you can go on to the next site that's that shows its prices or you can do some prodding you could just send an informal email saying hey i'm curious about your basic freelance packages how much do they cost he may get back to you he may not and then use those numbers to analyze what you might be able to charge. So what I'm saying is, if these are projects you can do, those numbers that this person is throwing out, you may, you may want to approach those. So instead of charging $100 for a landing page, people in your area are charging five and six, you may want to think about that. Now, again, I cannot tell anyone exactly what to charge, but this is just kind of getting, giving you ballpark numbers so that you're not chronically undercharging. And I know how discouraging it can be when you set up, you set a price and you're not getting any calls, you're not getting any emails. And so what do you do? You have a scruple and you say, mm, I'm going to lower my price $500. So you lower your price $500 and you're not getting any calls. You're not getting any emails. You have another scruple. What do I do? You drop your price again, and it's just how low can you go? And then finally, you find yourself charging 15 bucks an hour, and you may as well have stayed at your terrible nine to five job where you're flipping widgets and assembling instructions for broken toasters. It's 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 a bad trip. It's a bad trip and a bad habit to get into. And it's something again I've done. Uh, my most popular video on this channel tells you all about my early experience, one of my early experiences um, with a client who was taking advantage of me. I just, I didn't have the confidence. I didn't do enough research and I was new. And that's something you should realize as a newbie too, is that there are going to be moments where you're thinking, what am I doing? Is, why am I doing this? It gets easier. This, this pricing thing, this charging thing, this dealing with clients thing is not an easy thing. And there's a lot of experimentation. So let's go to the next one. This is auto design. Yes, I'm local and I'm a web, des web designer. I live and work in Pflugerville. Is that how you say that, Texans? 
I lived in Texas, but never knew how to pronounce that name. Pflugerville, Texas, just a stone's throw away. So he's been doing it for 20 some years. So I see some numbers right here. Now, granted, we're new, but just because someone has been doing it for a long time doesn't necessarily mean they have more skills than you or they're, they're serving their customers in the most efficient and optimal ways. Now, I don't know anything about this guy. He could be the guru. He could be, he could be a coding god. I don't know. But I'm just saying um, some of these profiles, I mean, they're putting their best foot forward. So be aware that this is marketing. And they're trying to generate interest. So don't, don't be intimidated when someone says, yeah, I have 15 years experience. Well, I mean, can you code as a newbie? Can you, can you do these things? You have to make that assessment. So he says, I'm not an offshore firm. I'm not a moonlighter, nor a recent graduate who cranks out throwaway websites for $2,500 a pop. Ooh, -hoo! I like it. That's pretty spicy. On the other hand, I'm not a web design agency with, with a large staff and a $50,000 minimum. I am an experienced freelance web designer for 20 years, a real pro who works directly with you to create one of a kind website, to create a one of a kind website or improve your existing website. I'm reasonably, reasonably priced, but not cheap. My fees for the websites I always custom design and develop are in the eight to $15,000 range. I like this narrative. I like this is a good sales page. I uh, the trust factor here is really strong. This guy's really honest. And that's another thing you can start taking away when you're building your own freelance portfolio, your freelance website. Taking these ideas, um, obviously, it's not going to be word for word, but bringing that spice, bringing that flavor so people can connect with that and bringing that honesty so that people know right off the bat, OK, this developer charges 80 bucks an hour. This guy, Otto, his hourly rate is 100 bucks unless you have a maintenance and support plan, which in case it's 75 bucks an hour. I like it. I like the transparency. Um, and then people can decide right away if they can afford it or not. Now, as a newbie, probably not going to be able to command eight and fifteen thousand dollars for your first projects. So this is where you're kind of penciling it out in your head. Okay, let's just say you found a web developer in your town who consistently charges hourly. They charge 15 bucks an hour. You've seen their work, it's like, oh my gosh, it's bad. And then you see somebody like this. So we have the $15 an hour here. We have the eight to 15 here for an experienced person who who makes things custom. And who, let's see, I wonder if he has, here's his portfolio right here. But again, going to these pages, ask yourself, is this something I can do? Because eventually you will be able to charge eight to 15 grand for a project. That's not uncommon. And if you do it long enough, you'll be seeing more and more of that. Uh, it's just that when you first start out, uh, your trust factor is, is kind of low. Your trust factor is very low. So you have to work and create a portfolio of projects that are that are looking good, but also you're not charging your, your first couple of clients full retail price because you also need that experience. So I hope you see where I'm going with this. As you're seeing these numbers, you need to really do an analysis here. This is research and analysis. Start mapping out, you know, whether you're using an online program, desktop, or just good old fashioned pen and paper, start taking notes. Okay. This guy does custom web development or web design. His sites cost eight to 15. Joe Blow down the street, who I've seen his work, it's terrible, he charges 15 bucks an hour. Can I do better than that? Okay, and then you move yourself up from that 15. So that's your baseline. You're gonna find more people um, who, who don't excel at like you do or do different things than you do. Keep mapping. Now over here, we have a Squarespace website designer. Haters going to hate, but I will tell you, Christy Price, I don't know her, but I know she's running a business. She's getting paid. And you know what? She's not cheap. Her professional Squarespace package starts at $3,250 and she's in Austin. So that's another thing you want to look over too. is something like Squarespace and Wix. Are those things you want to do? Some web developers are like, yeah, that's not web development. I'm not interested. That's totally fine. But if this is something you're interested, you may be interested in doing, start taking notes on this too. 
So her packages include all of these things, Squarespace templates, customized contact form, on-site SEO, detailed built-in websites, connecting Google Search Console, two weeks post-launch support via email, seven pages. Is this something you can do? And can you make it look beautiful? And can you, can you make the client happy with your work? If you can, you're looking at some pretty good numbers. For your first couple of projects, though, developers, this is important. You, it's more important to build your trust factor with your first few clients. So it's okay to do projects for free. It's okay to do projects for really cheap. And it's okay to feel uncomfortable with where you should be with numbers. It's tough. It's tough. But once you get to that fourth or fifth client, you should start feeling a little more comfortable, a little more confident, better engaged with your tools and your clients and getting that workflow down and really starting to see more clarity with where you're headed as a freelancer. But one big thing you should be doing is check your local competition. Check to see what the demands are in your local area. Because there's two types of web developer freelancing. There's the higher freelancer sites. There's local. Local is going to pay more. You're going to have more consistent clients and your, your clients are going to treat you better. Just period dot. So whatever you choose, do some research, do an assessment, analyze these numbers and graph out where you think you are. It's hard to be objective with your own self. It's hard to, hard to be objective when we're talking about a subjective matter, but try, try to be as objective as possible, mapping out your skills, what you've done, and what you can offer clients uh, relative to these other people in your area. You're going to get some numbers. There's some are going to be good. Some are going to be awesome. Some are going to be a little intimidating, and some you're going to say, are you serious? I hope this video was helpful. If you got something out of it, please smash a button. Thanks for watching developers. I'll see you in the next video. Again, I want to thank invoiceninja.com for sponsoring today's video. If you really don't like paperwork, I know I kind of don't. You also prefer to focus on your passion and not waste a lot of time on the admin stuff. Check out Invoice Ninja.